Greetings from Pavlo Ardanov, Fulbright Research Scholar at the Agricultural Sustainability Institute, University of California, Davis, and co-founder of the NGO Permaculture in Ukraine. This video, supported by the International Visegrad Fund, is a part of the project How Dare You on providing policy recommendations for promoting biodiversity-based agriculture to policymakers, agriculture organizations, extension specialists and local communities. In this video, I present the possible ideas and solutions to design an integrated mosaic landscape for community. This planning is aimed at supporting small and medium agriculture producers, increasing their energy sovereignty, sustainable local resource use, and developing productions and services linked to restoration agriculture. Such design also helps to conserve biodiversity as well as to counteract and adapt to climate change. Agroforestry or cultivation of arable crops between the rows of timber, fruit or nut trees or shrubs helps to diversify and stabilize an income, to increase nutrient use efficiency, to reduce impact of environmental stressors on annual crops, to prevent erosion and to establish habitats for useful wildlife and thus to support biocontrol. In order to reduce competition with arable crops, Trees are planted at wider distance, usually to widths of harvesting equipment. The lower branches are cut, and also tree roots may be ripped along to tree line. Sun-loving crops can be planted between young trees, for example, cucurbits crops that suppress weed growth, grain and leguminous crops or vegetables, while early crops such as radish or garlic, late crops such as winter cereals and shade-tolerant crops uh, such as alfalfa are suitable for cultivation between big fruiting trees. Fruit trees with same harvesting time can be combined within rows for ease of harvesting. In silvopasture system, tree cultivation can be combined with raising livestock or growing hay. Sheltering livestock from sun and wind improve its health and increase mass gain. Grass under tree shadow remains green longer, and browsable forage can be used to feed livestock in the midst of a summer drought. Uh, Free-range poultry needs less grain feed and can also reduce population of insect pests. Sheep are traditionally used as grass mowers in orchards and wineries. Hawks and other birds of prey can be raised to control rodent pests. Steep slopes need to be reforested or terraced to prevent erosion while moderate slopes are suitable for planting tree crops and raising livestock. Horizontal or leveled ditches can be dug across the slopes and mounds downhill the ditches can be used to plant trees and shrubs. Young branches of pollarded trees are out of reach and protected from damage by livestock, and branches can be cut for browsing when needed. Uh, tree rows must be fenced or protected from livestock damage with thorny hedge grow. Rock fields across the slopes prevent erosion and gradually form small terraces above, and grass among rocks remains fresh longer and can feed livestock during the hottest summer months. Green paddocks can be established with hedge growths and planted with forage crops for cyclic livestock grazing. Livestock can be also pastured in adjoining fenced shelter belts in the time of acorns and berry ripening, since controlled grazing can increase plant diversity. It is important to give pasture sufficient time for recovery, as in rotation grazing system. 
Permanent or temporary paddocks can be established with hedges, wire fence or mobile electric fence. Rotational grazing also enables uh, efficient pasture utilization, where sheep pastured after cattle graze short grass, and they are followed by chicken that additionally eat maggots from cow dung that reach good size in a couple of days after livestock grazing. Utilizing livestock with different and complementary food preferences helps uh, better control grass growth and to reduce the amount of flammable dry grass on pasture. In addition, increased uh, interval between grazing on each paddock reduce helmin's infestation risk. So-called egg mobiles are often used to move laying hens in rotational grazing system, and guard dog or guard geese in the chicken paddock protect birds from predators. Chicken can additionally consume fallen fruits, for example, mulberry, grown as compatible crop in walnut orchard. Chicken are raised in so-called chicken tractors, which are simple and efficient system to improve pasture quality and to obtain an additional profit from orchard or woodlot. Profitability of horticulture, in particular with walnut crops that start to bear commercial yield quite late in their lifetime, can be additionally increased by interplanting fast-growing timber trees and fruit bushes in young orchard. Ideally, the cultures are combined based on the target market segment, similarity of their cultivation requirement, and available machinery for crop cultivation and processing. While goats are devastating in orchards, their appetite can be beneficial for clearing bushy patches for future orchards. The most diverse productive system is forest garden, multilayered and densely planted system that in temperate climate resembles the structures of south-facing forest edge and which consists of edible, forage and subsidiary crops, for example for increasing soil fertility and providing pest control, where each plant is serving several of above-mentioned functions and the preference is given to native plants and local uh, crop varieties to serve as living seed bank. This small-scale system for households is aimed at producing variety of food on a small property, as well as to establish structurally complex environment for supporting diversity of wildlife. Together with shelter births, forest gardens shall constitute a regional system of biocorridors to support diversity of wildlife, biocontrol organisms and pollinators. Therefore, both governmental and community support is needed to support establishment of such multifunctional systems, which are important for maintaining both agricultural productivity and natural heritage. Main production plots, which are depicted here, are utilizing high technologies, since we believe that agriculture robots will become an important part of future agriculture. Such technologies can be beneficial for communities and regenerative agriculture if decision makers and investors will focus on supporting small-scale solutions that will be affordable for small and medium producers, as well as those aimed at facilitating management of crop polyculture, for example, machinery for no-till, precision weeding and harvesting in multi-cropping stands. 
Yet the main prerequisites for sustainable large-scale commercial production is crop diversity, both in rotation and in adjoining fields, as well as correctly designed shelter belt system to protect fields from water and wind erosion for even distribution of snow cover and rain precipitation and as wildlife habitat including biocontrol organisms and pollinators. Solitary trees, groups of shrubs and untilled grass patches serve as stepping stone habitats, promoting beneficial wildlife migration from shelter based and natural environments into cultivated fields. Energy efficient design of dwellings helps to significantly reduce the bills for heating and cooling. All houses in the settlements should face south or sunwards to absorb heat from low winter sun, while deciduous trees or vines on trellises shallow houses in summer. Evergreen trees and vines shall protect houses from cold northern winter winds. House roofs and even intentionally mounted collection surfaces, as shown on the photo below, are all used for rainwater harvesting into above-ground cisterns or below-ground reservoirs. Water collection reservoirs need frost protection in cool temperate climate. Communities shall establish food processing center to increase the added value of produce by its members, for example, juice or oil pressing, fruit and herb drying, etc. It can be also mobile processing unit, as demonstrated on the photo below, which can serve the needs of several villages in the region. Communities should also develop green tourism infrastructure, such as ethnic style guest houses, cycling and horse riding trails, kayaking, mountain climbing, etc. Communities shall also promote their energy sovereignty by uh, utilizing feasible local green energy sources without harming the environment. Wetlands and water courses need correct regional planning and management to prevent their contamination, to increase their suitability for wildlife, livestock and human, to improve water harvesting and retention. In particular, key line design depicted on the right photo helps to harvest and distribute water across the slope by utilizing natural landscape hollows. Series of small connected dams at different elevation along the slope helps to harvest and utilize melt waters, which constitute one of the major precipitation sources in cold temperate climate. Such seasonal water ponds can serve as frost protected oases for fruit tree cultivation on a slope. Riparian zones require protection by multilayered vegetation arranged into several zones, as well as fencing when needed to protect from livestock damage. Riparian buffers protect adjoining fields from flooding, prevent water waste contamination with agricultural chemicals, and create habitats for useful wildlife. Thus, they have to be wider next to the natural conservation areas. Solar panels are to be best placed above the waterways and irrigation channels, where they do not occupy productive lands, while shadowing water from overheating and blooming. Ponds stretched in direction of prevailing summer wind facilitate water mixing. Such design, along with a shadowing water table by tall trees planted on southern bank, 
protect water from overheating and blooming. Shallow water plants clean water and create refuge for fish fries. Deep non-frozen fish wintering hole let fish survive throughout winter. And solar energy powered fountain will uh, pump cool water from this hole up to the lake surface in summer. Boulders in the shallow area will absorb sun heat and melt ice in winter, protecting fish from suffocation. Chinampas are the mean of profitable agriculture management on wetlands without destroying this rich natural ecosystem. Islets with banks strengthened by willow and poplar can be used for land crop cultivation, and in case of Ukrainian chinampa, warm rosin beds with three functional zones are utilized. And channels between islets are used for fish farming, while trellises above channels are utilized for wine crop cultivation. Ducks and geese in their daily walking routine from their houses to the pond through the garden will collect slugs and snails. Poultry can also consume crop residues on the fields and also prey for pests. To efficiently serve the biocorridor, barrier and wildlife habitat functions, shelter belts have to occupy significant part of a landscape. Therefore, it is feasible to design them productive, while state and communal support is needed to support sustainable forestry management. Forests shall secure the future for both present generation, serving as a secure retirement fund, as well as for future generation by protecting soil fertility and biodiversity. Copies can be used for production of construction timber, fuel wood and browsable forage. Trees can be either copies or pollarded when the trunk is uh, cut high to establish young branches out of reach of domestic animals. Such system can extend the tree life and also increase diversity of the ground vegetation layer by letting more sun through tree canopy. Fast growing or so-called energy trees can be also grown in shelter belts for fuel wood and thus for providing energy sovereignty. Such shelter belt can serve barrier function if not all rows are harvested in a single year. Such management also favor permanent habitat for wildlife. Growing hardwood timber trees is an investment in future, increasing recreational attractiveness of the region, carbon farming and supporting biodiversity, in particular when the preference is given to local flora, which is the best support for the local fauna. Forest farming or growing mushrooms, berries, medicinal plants or breeding livestock in the woods helps to reduce anthropogenic pressure on natural ecosystems and to obtain valuable produce. In order to serve as an efficient biocorridors, shelter belts require proper management. In particular, fencing as well as above and below ground road passages for animals shall be established in regions with big wildlife population and next to protected areas. Communities have to identify and protect plots with high natural diversity, such as meadows, forests, wetlands, etc., and to convert degraded and unproductive agriculture lands, for example field margins, to semi-natural habitats such as white flower strips and woodlots.
Link to presentation slides is given under description to this video. And in the top right corner, you can see the link to video lectures for farmers on designing crop polycultures, while in the top left corner is the link to video lectures for university students. On this slide, as well as in description below, you can see the link to resolution of the conference Polycultures and Permaculture with policy recommendations on supporting biodiversity-based or ecologically intensive agriculture. Also, there is a link to conference proceedings where you can read more detailed descriptions of some technologies mentioned in this video. For example, Ukrainian Chinampa and Warm Rosum Bed. Also, I invite you to visit the web page of the projects Polyculture and Permaculture and to subscribe to Facebook page. We are interested in further collaboration with policymakers and communities. Please check my address on the slide and email me. Thank you very much for your attention.